Okay, it was just cloudy, but it started to rain. Let's see if it actually stops. And what did I read today? How about this one? Apparently, they're flying drones around nuclear areas to gather things like information. This one says, a small drone flies into a damaged Fukushima nuclear reactor for the first time to study melted fuel. A drone small enough to fit in one's hand flew inside one of the damaged reactors at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant Wednesday in hopes to examine some of the molten fuel debris in areas where earlier robots failed to reach. Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings also began releasing the fourth batch of the plant's treated and diluted radioactive wastewater into the sea Wednesday. The government and TEPCO, the plant's operator, says the water is safe and the process is being monitored by the International Atomic Energy Agency, but the discharges have faced strong opposition by fishing groups and Chinese ban on Japanese seafood. That must be a hard sell to people. It's treated nuclear wastewater, but it's perfectly safe. Just the thought, for example, nuclear waste in water, I don't know if you can actually regain confidence in a lot of people with that. Kind of reminds me like of those videos you see where they literally take like animal poop, for example, and they extract the water out of it and they say, it's perfectly safe to drink. Again, just the perception of it. I can imagine most people go, okay, no thanks. A magnitude 9.0 quake and tsunami in March 2011 destroyed the plant's power supply and cooling systems, causing three reactors to melt down. The government and TEPCO plan to remove the massive amount of fatally radioactive melted nuclear fuel that remains inside each reactor, a daunting decommissioning process that has been delayed for years and mired by technical hurdles and a lack of data. So I guess this drone, for example, should be able to help out in that case. And while some places are trying to find ways to use drones to fly to various places to capture data and all that, how about here in Canada? Apparently we're trying to find ways to counter drone. And this one here says, Leonardo to equip Canadian armed forces with counter drone technology. Leonardo has been awarded a contract by Public Services and Procurement Canada to provide its Falcon Shield CUAS system for operation by the Canadian Armed Forces CAF. The company will provide a number of systems and a 10-year sustainment package that includes options for additional equipment and the spiral development of new capabilities. First systems will be delivered later this year to the CAF, which will immediately deploy Falcon Shields to forward operating bases to protect deployment personnel. Falcon Shields is the UK's operationally proven solution to the growing threat from Group 1 to 3, smaller, slower and lower flying UAS, which are usually undetectable by conventional air surveillance equipment. Using a mix of advanced sensors from Leonardo and industry partners, the system rapidly detects, tracks and prioritizes threats and gives operators the means to neutralize them effectively. Kind of funny because what that actually made me think of something unrelated, but they mentioned here traditional radars and stuff, they can't detect the drones, for example, because they're too small. I remember during all the hysteria and stuff like that with drones and so forth, and I know someone actually who's adamant about it saying, you need to restrict all recreational drones because when they fly, it creates chaos. It shows up like on the radars, for example, in airports and all that. I'm like that can't be true. And this kind of confirms even more, but it kind of shows you, I guess, how unscientific and non-fact based it is for a lot of people who say restrict every single, for example, toy drone and all that. But either way, I guess here we're spending more money to find ways to deal with them, huh? And I was reading this, which was kind of fascinating. Usually when it comes to things, for example, let's just say electronics, if it's old, they will offer huge discounts for people to buy it. So like they can make room, for example, for the newer lineups. And that's usually good for people because regardless if it's like a year old, two years old, whatever, if it works, why not? But how about in this case where apparently Toyota has this car and they're offering $40,000 off. And yes, there's a catch, which is again, kind of interesting to think about. This one says Toyota offering fire sale pricing a Mirai FCV with shell hydrogen shutting down some hydrogen stations in California permanently. Would be hydrogen car buyers are declining, moving Toyota to issue $40,000 discounts on its 23 Mirai hydrogen vehicles. Well, imagine that. Would you actually still buy this? And it says here, want to buy a brand new Toyota for about $12,000? If you can lock in a steady supply of hydrogen, you can buy a 23 Mirai for about the same price as a 16 Honda Odyssey minivan with 152,000 miles according to auto trader listings. Toyota has issued a clear out $40,000 sales incentive to dealers on the second generation Mirai which retails for about $52,000. 
The move comes after Shell Hydrogen said it will no longer be operating some of its hydrogen light duty passenger fueling stations in California due to supply complications, closing seven of its 55 locations. Man, how will that work for people who already own the vehicle too? It says the Mirai is only sold in California and only a handful of California Toyota dealerships sell the FCVs. There are only about two dozen 23 vehicles in dealer and Benary. All new Mirais include $15,000 in complimentary fuel. Buyers get up to six years to use the credit. If buyers can get one at this price and access to hydrogen, it becomes essentially free driving for a few years. With the battery electric vehicle category facing a slowdown in consumer demand in part due to underdeveloped public charging infrastructure, hydrogen fuel cell, personal use vehicles with no real stable fueling infrastructure stand little chance of catching on or meriting much in the way of capital investment by automakers. The US government and private industry, however, are investing more than $60 billion in hydrogen refueling infrastructure and technology, but for heavy duty trucks and stationary power. Wow, that's kind of, again, would you actually buy a vehicle like this knowing you wouldn't have many options to actually charge it up and all that but it makes you think too like people are pushing for example electric vehicles and you'd have to think are we prepared in that sense to actually supply people with all the electricity the stations and all that to actually make it work immediately because in some places they're already saying ban gas vehicles for example and I guess this would kind of demonstrate it doesn't seem like we really have the whole system in place to really say okay we don't need this anymore See you guys later.